Welcome back and many thanks for staying with us right here on Morning at NTV. It absolutely warms my heart to know that you are still watching the number one platform in the country, Morning at NTV. would like to unpack what happened in the Kayunga District LC5 chairperson by election. What really transpired in that election? We do have Alex Mufumbiro Waiswa. He is the deputy spokesperson for the National Unity Platform Party and would like to find out what really happened. Well, Biraro Ephraim, the MP for Buhaji West, shall be joining us a little bit later on to also expand more uh, from the NRM side. All right, Alex, thank you for joining us. Uh, Comrade, thank you very much Indeed. for inviting me this morning Indeed. to come and expound mm. on um, matters of national importance and Indeed. issues that uh, pertain all mm. our living and great availability as a people in Indeed. Uganda. Now, why some of what actually happened in Kayunga? Uh, in Kayunga, mm. it was broad day fagare. Um, you can also quote it as robbery, mm. uh, where a constitutional process mandated by the laws of this country. Mm. Um, the background of this election is that we had the one Fefeka mm. who was elected in uh, January 26th um, as LOC5 chairperson. Mm. It should be noted that um, he was elected on the National Unity Platform ticket, mm. but shortly after his uh, swearing in, mm. he had been approached by many forces from mm. the NRM mm. and the NRA on his leadership as chairman mm. because, you know, Fefeka was a staunch Muganda, Indeed. a staunch Muslim man, and his mother was orchestrated at a time when he was going for prayers mm. uh, to the next mosque. Mm. Um, so after his murder, the constitution mandates uh, the electoral commission mm. 60 days to organize a mm. by-election. Now that is in terms of either LOC5 or member of parliament. Mm. Um, so what happened is that the days they found the money mm. and they took us to an election mm. which we agreed to because we are a political party Indeed. and the political party must participate in politics. Mm. So we agreed, we said, okay, fine, the other one was murdered, but we can still find a viable candidate. Mm. Yes, we did find Nakwede through a very tedious process, Indeed. by the way. Um, we had about 20 candidates, uh, including relatives of the late, mm. but our system uh, of finding candidates was still uh, uh, working, mm. so we had just to reignite it, find out what is, is necessary, and oh yes, Nakwede is the, is, is, is the angel mm. of the people of Kayunga. Now, the background of local government and decentralization mm. is that the, the leader at the local government led level from mm. LOC1 to LOC5 is directly in touch mm. with the people he leads. And that is the, break, the constitutional breakdown of mm. governance uh, from the highest echelon, that is the president, the executive, downtrend. Now... Genome Seven at the district, he mm. has cows, chief administrative officers, he has RDCs, he has Gisos, mm. he has Dissos, he has, he, has, he has over 10 people working for office of the president at mm. the district. Mm. Now, we nominated our candidate, a number of candidates were nominated from different political platforms, mm. and we started the campaign. We had 13 days to move all the 13 sub-counties of Kayunga. Mm. Kayunga is quite a big, uh, also a big district. Indeed. Uh, it is on 1,700 square miles, but about 1,000 square miles of it is on water mm. because it has both Lake Choga and it also has River Nile. A limited time frame indeed. Uh, yeah. Now, we, we went all out and said, okay, let's do this mm. because it is a constitutional process. Indeed. We are not acting out of the law and it has been sanctioned by the Electoral Commission. Indeed. So we went out. Uh, the goings on as, uh, from the start were not good. We found a lot of embarrassment, a lot of intimidation. Mm. And there is a way members of the National Resistance uh, Army carry, carry members of the National Unity Platform with a lot of indignity. I can tell you they take us less to be human beings, the way we are handled. Mm. Um, they think we have no stake in this country, wrongly so. So it started in a very, very swinging way, but we went through all, all of it. Now, mm. on the 11th in Bali, as we were, we were in Bali, 
our ambulance that we had sanctioned to move with us at all times because we had got a problem late uh, earlier where one of our we lost a colleague in the campaign mm -hmm. as a result of not having good infrastructure mm -hmm. working hospitals in kayunga and medicine so mm -hmm. we said we shall going forward move with an ambulance the bad news i can tell you on this set is that the ambulance was shot at by police they shot at an ambulance with a sick person inside there was no sick person mm. but it was moving to our campaign mm. such that when we get any challenge because i mean the president moves with the toilet mm. he moves with an ambulance mm. it is not an offense to move mm. with an ambulance despite you not being sick it mm. is an anticipation to give first aid and handle Just in numbers case anything happens where in the campaign anything that happened. Mm. now first things forward we have our president generational leader vision mm. bearer supposed to come and visit us in uh, in the campaign trail join us in the campaign mm. trail like it is the nomenclature of all other 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 by election campaigns so you so you had felt like since this was a sanction or official campaign trail there was no reason to for challenge first seek some kind of security uh, clearance before coming to Kayunga because you're getting information that you didn't seek clearance you continued with this um, you know campaign without actually seeking any election uh, security clearance if you will I am still wondering whether mm. the NRA also wants to give Chagulani the, the permits of movement. I see. And if they want to give him permits of movement, they should tell us soon and then tell us how we apply for them. Because he is a normal Ugandan. Mm. He is a Ugandan who does not need anybody's authority to where he is going. Uh, I think that is also uh, pedestrian by all those who uh, monger that around as a subject that he is supposed to seek. Uh, somebody's opinion or permission to go anywhere. Yes, we are being led mm. uh, with all signs of apathy and slavery by, our, our, uh, by the tyrant, but then things that have not been formalized, like him needing a permit to mm. move, we shall not accept them unless they come out and tell us. What do you mean, apartheid and slavery? That is a very, very strong allegation, Alex. If you look at uh, the vehicles that entered uh, mm. Kayunga, as General Dictator 7 was entering Kayunga, the tyrant entered as if he was going to Diara Congo. There were members, mm. uh, police members, those that worked during apartheid in South Africa. You know, in apartheid, these tear gas members that you see, the anarchy that you see that has been now coped, mm. uh, uh, that has now been got black and white by the dictator and the tyrant, these were the that this was the machinery mm. that was used against the blacks in South Africa. Indeed. And... Uh, we, 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 we are alive to the fact and hopeful that how apartheid was defeated mm. is the very method that we shall use to defeat the growing anarchy that is being meted to us mm. uh, by, by the tyrant. But there was no uh, multi-party politics during the apartheid regime, Alex? Yeah, there was no multi-party politics mm. because there was no politics. But is, is here, mm. do we have multi-party politics in your own eyes? Mm. What happened in Kayunga, does it reflect multi-party politics? Mm. Even Captain uh, Francis Babu doesn't seem to believe we have multi-party politics. We do politics. not have multi-party politics. But multi -party what he does politics. believe in is the fact that this heavy military deployment that we saw, he actually says they might have been responding to a clear security threat, that maybe something was going to actually take center stage in Kayunga, and that's why they swung into action. Was here a threat coming in from Chagulanyi or any of your supporters? Chagulani. Had you planned something different other than campaigning for Nakwede? Chagulanyi is a threat to Genom Seveni because he does not know where he came from and because he has broken the continuity of mm. of of of, of genome seven and his cohorts of forming a dynasty that has never existed in this country mm. that is why he is uh, there is a policy to isolate him from the public there is a policy to isolate the NUP and target as a rebel movement. Mm. As I was here some time ago and I told you that they have classified us as the rebels in suits I see. Uh, simply because of standing against the oligarchy but moving forward about the kayunga election is that when they refused him to come he did not come mm. but the special forces command and let me let nobody lie to you the army the special forces command mm. these are units these are institutions that are only deployed to protect the borders of this country not to create mayhem on ugandans mm. the reason why genome 7 went to war in 1980 was the actions of the army hmm. despite the fact that he was the very person doing the bad deeds in form of putting on the the, the army uniform of the country hmm. but the 
claim that the army mm. would torture Ugandans, would kill Ugandans, would 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 would, would take over because. In 1980, the election was organized by the mm. military council, headed mm. by Mwanga and Indeed. General Museven. Indeed. And the reasons why there was war in 1980 after that election, even when Museven is not the one who had been defeated, was simply because democracy had been abrogated. Now, what happened in Kayunga, mm. and what is important, that Jennifer Chobutunji, the returning officer, declared results in broad daylight, in front of cameras, under tight security. And these results still polled in Akwede Harriet, winning by over 6,450 votes. What was the total that was counted? Now, because according to what we are having right here, courtesy of the government or the Electoral Commission, Harriet Nakwede polled 31,803 votes. And we also do know that Andrew Mugwonge uh, polled some 31,830 votes. Now, let me tell you, just like you, you're seeing those figures. Indeed. We got, uh, we got, we got 800, we got... Uh -huh, and we you're got saying this is the returning officer that had these numbers? The, the, in the, broad daylight? The, 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 these are the official results. Indeed. And in these results, when you hear Mwonge's results, mm. don't be shocked, because Indeed. still, these were the inflated figures. Because what we did as the National Interplatform, mm. on the query of the 11 polling stations, we agreed and said, okay, let's move with what they are counting. So we moved with what they were counting. All right, let, we have let me read it for you, because the viewer might think this is you're Nakwede. reading from something different. So yes. it shows here, Nakwede Harriet, no polled 35,212 35, votes. And it also shows Andrew Mwonge, at 20,661. That is a huge milestone now, from what they're telling us. Now, in the tally center, mm. and I'm, vis I'm requesting that, let it be maybe NTV take up this story further and understand uh, that this woman is a criminal. She's supposed to be charged of, a crimi of criminal offenses, abuse of office, uh, forgery, fraud, and also treason. Because this is a constitutional process, she's supposed to be charged of murder, mm. because attempted murder, mm. because there are lots of people who wanted to do different things in mm. Kayunga. She's supposed to be. She is supposed. Mm. She's supposed to be actually isolated in this country. Mm. Now, when she added further results, we were still leading because this is fifteen thousand votes. Indeed. So when they added more votes, bringing in uh, votes that had not been counted, bringing in inexistent polling stations, mm. we were still leading by a margin of 6,450 votes. So when we calculated and she had finished counting, we said, fine, we have been cheated, but we are still in a big lead. It was mm. stealing an elephant and putting it in a wallet. I see. Now, what happens? She decides to wait us for three hours after the arrival of uh, Mr. Yavakama. And get note of these names. Mm. I am talking about Chobu Tunji. I'm talking about Yavakama. Hours uh, before, we had arrested a one Afande Kaguta, who was a presiding officer at Namagabi polling station. A now, security guard. How was a security, he in charge of a security a officer mm. is, we arrested him from Namagabi polling station, a coventry, assisted by a nun of that coventry. Mm when he ha was participating in voter fraud. Mm. Now, when you put it in context, she waited for three hours, but they were not in the lead. She had tallied already the results and were waiting for verification and multiplication. What did that girl do? Mm. Job Tunji Jennifer. Mm. I wonder whether she has kids. I wonder, of course, I have been told that uh, she is a daughter of uh, this lady who stole the masks of UBC uh, and, uh, and, a political and the political commissar of the NRA. Now, when she declared the results, she, she did not scan because all the other forms were supposed to be scanned. Mm. She did not scan any result. But because she had failed on the obligation as to why she was brought, and this she had done before, such an election, sham election she had organized before. She did it with Nathan Naveta. Nathan Naveta was illegally declared. She did it with uh, uh, Nasser Ashraf, who is now 
uh, the imposter Elos, uh, the imposter local government mayor where they cheated Chibugudu Musi Badman in the same style. Now, she was brought to Kayunga, yes. according to our intelligence, mm. as the last resort to come and do exactly what she did. Mm. Now, this is a criminal syndicate. Mm. It is a gang, and it comes from the top echelon of the government. It comes from the office of State House. It is there in the office of the RDC because all of them were involved. Now, when she decided to declare, you see even the way she declared the results, she just interchanged the last digits because they had no results on their table that could beat our win. And she started with Nakwede. After Nakwede, she interchanged. In fact, she even shed tears in uh, that place when she failed, when she realized that she had failed to get the numbers that she needed. That is Alex Weiser Mofumbiro unpacking uh, the controversies that actually took center stage in the Kayunga LC5 uh, chairperson by election within that area that is last week. We also do have the NRM representative that is Honorable Ephraim Biraro. He is actually the MP for Bohoiji West and is going to be joining us right now to actually counter these allegations. We'll be right back. All right, welcome back and many thanks for staying with us right here on the number one breakfast show in the country morning at NTV. We are still unparking the controversies that took center stage within the Kayunga district by election when they were electing an LC5 chairperson. We do have Ephraim Biraro, Honorable. He's representing Buhaiji West and also David, no, Alex. Why so? Mofumbiro, he is the deputy a spokesperson for the National Unity Platform Party. They are still here with me to unpack why elections always degenerate into violence. Ephraim Biraro, thank you for joining us. A very good morning. Uh, thank you very much. Indeed. I want to welcome my honorable colleague. Indeed. I welcome everybody. Indeed. Greetings to all my people. Yeah, from Buhaiji West. From Buhaiji West and all Ugandans. And the people of my village in particular, Chikamba, mm. and my family. Indeed. So, greetings to everybody. Mm. And I want to welcome all of us to this talk show. Thank Kayunga you very much. by election is our yardstick, but you are talking about uh, why elections always degenerate into a state of confusion, into a state of violence. You do have military meting out its own violence on supporters of various opposition strongmen. Why does that, uh, you know, take center stage all the time, Ephraim Biraro? Why can't we have peaceful elections? Uh, thank you very much. Mm. All what we cherish is peaceful elections, Indeed. transparent mm. elections, fair. But unfortunately, mm. And I say, unfortunately, Indeed. it's not what we see. Why? Reason, the people that go into the elections, mm. they go into a do-or-die exercise. I see. As individuals. And these are the people who borrow the forces. Mm. I'm hesitant to think or even say that it is government directly involved. But that are individuals, mm. whether it is police, whether it is uh, prisoners, whether it is the army or LDU, mm. we have got individual personalities. I see. Whether it is an MP contestant or LC5 contestant, we have got individuals. Because we have had areas where you find elections, they have been organized, they occur, and anybody wins. Let it be opposition, the bigger or the smaller opposition, they win. So the we problem is politics of identity? Uh, politics of, uh, that is part of it. Mm. But there is politics of individualism. I see. Politics, that's why I say the do or die approach in our politics is becoming a problem. Mm. Because you find people have turned it, someone tells you, I must win. That is a wrong mentality. I must win this election. And whatever he does into that exercise, mm. now that means either he will take somebody's life or he himself is dead. Mm. And that is a very, very, very terrible yes. approach. I have seen it over time. Mm. I was around. I saw I'm about one. I had not yet got bothered. Mm. I saw Idi Amin time. I saw about a two time. I saw the UNRWA time. Mm. I saw all these regimes I have seen. And I have come to participate in this current. What uh, you saw in the Obote uh, 2 regime, yes. the election being stolen in broad daylight, you do know that did take center stage in 1980. This ele that election in was stolen I was a voter. I in voted. broad daylight. I the election voted. was by the, by the UPC strongmen. And, and in turn, they went to every village looking for individuals who had not voted for the, uh, for the UPC and were killing them using iron bars. That happened in 1980. That's why President Museveni decided to go to the bush to actually save this country. But is it the same that transpired in Kayunga? An election being stolen in broad daylight yeah, by yeah. the state. Is it the same thing you saw? You know, Mr. Moderator, the words you use are mm. very relative. Mm. When we are saying we want to save this country, mm. what are we quarreling about now? Mm. 
in the country. We, we are, we are talking about because we're remaining employing the same because tactics. I want to be very we went objective. to the bush to fight. Why are we quarreling? Why are we fighting this time? Because what we are using happening? the same tactics yes. that we went to the bush to fight. Militarism of elections was taking center stage during the Amin uh, presidency Obote time. and Obote time. So yes. we went to the bush to fight it. But right now it is taking center stage. And many people are wondering, why is it that the same reasons we went to the bush are the same prevalent examples being used by the same government of a militarization of mm. the elections? Why? Uh, you know, Mr. Moderator, the challenge we have mm. is we have got drama. Too much drama in politics. Too, too much drama in politics. How so? Captain Francis well, Babo also mentioned it. Yeah. We have got a lot of drama in mm. these politics. Mm. You find someone stages a game in order to tarnish the other. I see. This is the whole problem. With due respect, we have the opposition. Mm. We have got NRM. We put the opposition together. Mm. The way they go out and play things. Then also the way NRM portrays things. Some of us, we feel the future of the country is ruined. Mm. Because someone stages, mm. one, a lie. Someone creates a story. I see. Someone feigns injury. I someone see. feigns, you know, pretense. Mm. So that someone can win a position. When you, so mean, when you say staged, uh, in this respect of Kayunga by election, what was staged? Yeah, well, we are not in Kayunga, mm. but we saw what happened in Kayunga. Mm. And it is alleged. Mm. And it is because staged. Kayunga is our yardstick. And, and so it is, what seen, are some of those it is seen all over social media. Mm. You see someone has an injury, mm. then the next moment you see someone playing football. I see. You see someone has an injury on the left hand side of the mm. head, then another time you see the injury here. You see someone has an injury and is taking selfies. Now you don't know what exactly is taking place. And we have, it is not the first time we are seeing it. We have seen it a, a lot of, in a lot of places. Political we have seen people, we have been seen people mm. getting disappeared or kidnapping, kidnapping themselves. This one you must have seen. People kidnap themselves so that they put it on another person, on another party. <coughs> and it is not only in one party. Me, I'm very objective. I want to make it very clear. Even we have had people from NRM feigning and staging drama in order to win an election, mm. in order to attract sympathy. Now, that one, the, uh, to a distant listener, to a distant observer, is seen as true. But in this recent Kayunga election, we have seen people talk about things that have not happened. Okay. And then when someone wins, they say it is a surprise. Mm. No, anybody who goes into that election, like all the candidates we had in the Kayunga election, we are all capable Talking of Talking about things that never happened. So does yeah. that mean Ephraim yeah. Kamoto that the rigging we, they've been talking Ephraim about Biraru. never happened? Ephraim Biraru, that the rigging never happened? The, the rigging has to be proved by court. Yes. The rigging has to be proved by court. Mm. Because and we that cannot that know, uh, yes. we cannot know what each one arranges. Mm. Because even I have heard the NRM people say that it's the Inup mm. tried to rig the what? Elections. Now, whom do you trust at, uh, uh, on Mia Mission? On Mia Mission. Whom do you trust? <laughs> on Mia Mission. Noob says they have been Mr. rigged out. Mr. NRM says mm. uh, Noob tried to rig Mr. and there was excess. Mr. Now, Ephraim. what do we take? Okay, yeah. that is Honorable I, Ephraim yeah. Biraro. He yeah. is the M MP for Buhuayi West. Thank you very much yes, for your sir. humble submission. Yeah. Let's also bring in Weiswer. I mean, I, you're not I, too far. I, I want you're here to, in I, my mix. He's saying political opportunism, mm. coming up with allegations over something that never took center I, I want to mm. share with you this video. Mm. I don't know. I but as you continue, you continue now, talking. Now, that video mm. is, uh, is, is... Continue is, talking. That mm. video is, <laughs> is of the RDC mm. of Mayuge mm. uh, trying to... Uh, Beating mm. a woman, mm. beating a woman, I saw this. clobbering a mm. woman. The RDC himself for his soldiers. The RDC is commanding, command and control. Mm. He's commanding an election, beating a woman. Sir, that is not a game. And you do not stage games with security. Lives can be. You people, you should stop. You should respect the dignity of human life. The reason Genome 7 went to war was to stop anarchy. And anarchy should always be condemned. You have children, my brother. And you don't know those children, why they have gone to school, what they will be. Even when you are around, it is incumbent on you to be sober and come out and condemn what is wrong. What happened in Kayunga was demonic. And it was a sequence of criminality from Genome 7. Mm -hmm. Stop macerating and sanitizing criminality. At the rally there, he said that only the NRM determines what is right. Even when you dance 12 for 20 hours, mm -hmm. once the NRM says we are right, we are right. That reciprocates 
what was happening and what was being done by the returning officer. Stop taking us for granted and as fools. Mm. In Kayunga, we did not have an army. The only directive they gave to us was that Bobby Wine was not supposed to go there. And in the morning, in the wee hours of the morning, an entire military platoon was put at his home. There was no reason of beating that woman. And you should stop, even you should be apologetic that you sit here and say, a woman stage managed her face and bandaged it. That woman was beaten on camera by the special forces command, stopping her from, from her office to the next to Kayunga Town Council, which was mandated to hold her rally. But because Museven was to pass from Kayunga to Busana, moving to two jurisdictions, we have been given one jurisdiction. I have. Nabanja yeah. bribed money. A person posturing as a prime minister hmm. bribed money, 4,000 shillings the whole night. Hmm. You guys, we are human beings. We see these things happen and they happened on camera. I have told you that can you go through an election? You can you tell this country, which is being taken over by soldiers? Do we have anywhere in this constitution where soldiers are supposed to man elections? You do have Captain mm -hmm. Francis Babu. Uh, Alex, L Captain let me Francis tell you. Babu came in on Friday. That was last week, you know. Um, and then he did mention that uh, it is the opposition people that are actually sometimes taunting security and security is actually reacting over how opposition is actually taunting them. Do you buy this? No, pa Captain, Captain mm. Francis Babu is simply living, he's, he's lost. Go ahead. He's lost. Mm. He doesn't know what happened. I was at the tally center, accredited. Mm. Mm. I was thrown out. Sebufu, accredited. Mm. He was thrown out. At the tally center, everybody is allowed to present their original DRA form when there is a query. Our declaration result forms were never looked at. They were all refused by the Electoral Commission and denied entry by security. Even the media was blocked by security. I was cleared by the PR of the Electoral Commission because I'm the deputy spokesperson mm. of the party. I was cleared by Bukenya. I was cleared by his deputy. Security refused because they were going to rig the election. Mm. Because they knew what they were doing in the Tele Center. We do not look like a generation that is going to be uh, that is going to be taken for granted in terms of national importance. This mm. election was rigged, and the background of rigging this election mm. is on what importance is Kayunga to the state. Why? Is, what importance why was it is it to them? For jurisdiction, we believe, mm. we believe, and we have seen mm. in Kayunga the land grabbing in Kayunga. There is no general. In Uganda, I don't know whether he has a Geno in his family, but there is no Geno in Uganda <laughs> because Genos come from there. There is no Geno in Uganda who does not have land in Kayunga, who has not grabbed land in Kayunga. From Geno Mseveni, Geno, Geno, every Geno has land there. And that is why all this violence was meted on us because Kayunga is liberated to be of the national unity platform. There is nobody who is going to bring games to be tortured. Security tortures, my brother. It dehumanizes. We have brothers who are killed by security operatives. Chivalama has never been seen, Mr. Oldman. He got lost. He, he disappeared in this country because of elections. He disappeared. His family will never see him. We only go for prayers. Yasin Kauma was murdered. And 20 million shillings sent to him by Genome 7. After calling him a terrorist, those were elections. So it is not about government. Government, I've said the highest echelon of this office is responsible. And what is very hurting to our generation is that this guy took up arms, stopped our mothers from studying, stopped our fathers from progressing, halted the progress, economic progress of our grandfathers, and he's doing the same thing 35 years down the road when we were not there. That is Alex Waiswa mm -hmm. Mufumbiro, the NUP, the deputy NUP spokesperson in the Riga. Let's also bring in Honorable Ganshanga Efrem Biraro, uh, the Honorable MP from Buhaji West, to also talk to us about multi-party politics. Are we ready for multi-party politi politics or dispensation? Uh, well, I sympathize mm. with Ugandans. Indeed. I sympathize with Honorable Alex, mm. and I sympathize with everybody upon whom such atrocities have been committed. That's an inclusive leader. Go ahead. I really sympathize with all of us. 
Mm. I have told you, mm. even the constituencies, Honorable Alex, with mm. respect, you must be interacting with some Honorable MPs from NRM, mm. and they tell you what they want to do. Mm. Some of them, not by, all of by them. By the NRM. Mm. Mm. By themselves. Not by us. By themselves. Go ahead. Everybody. I know mm. I have been in an area which has got mixed politics, Indeed. both opposition and NRM. I know what I go so what I have gone through. I know. It is not pleasing. Are we ready for multi-party politics? Now, when we come to multi-party politics, mm -hmm. multi-party politics is the way to go, or should be the way to go. When but you have other people being told, please do not yeah, come to this yeah. area and campaign while others are being well, allowed, is I'm, I'm, tell, I'm talking about the ideal situation. The ideology. I'm talking about the ideal situation. Indeed. And what I feel should be. All right. Because I'm a person who wants to believe mm. in walking the talk. Indeed. But unfortunately, mm. people never or hardly walk the talk. I hear you. We say this, we do the other one. Indeed. We practice what we don't preach. Indeed. And we do bury down deep into the soil mm. what we preach. Indeed. So we should be going multi-party politics because we don't have the same ideology. Mm. I cannot have the same belief or the same understanding with Honorable Alex. Mm. I cannot have the same uh, interpretation of situations like you do. So how so best that do we causes, create a conducive that environment causes, through which opposition can thrive and also the government? What I'm looking at, mm. my dear friend, Indeed. is if we want to have multi-party politics thrive, we should avoid politics, as I said at the beginning, mm. of do or die. Indeed. When you go into a competition, know that it is a competition, and out of two, mm. one must come out. You won in 2011, you won in 2016, then you won again in 2021. I get what no, you No, no, no. In 2016, I didn't win. No, you and won in 2011, you yes. lost in 2016, Still, and you won again and I in 2021. Mm. And I took it as it was. Mm. I lived my normal life until I came back also in a sober way. Indeed. But uh, now other people, really what you find on the ground mm. is not the same. Someone comes in, like I said, and I repeat, mm. stages a game, unfortunately. Then, when they lose, mm. they want to blame it on the other. Even when they have no reason to carry victory. Honorable Birado, so, before I let right. you go, give us some knowledge on how best we could actually resolve this situation. How do we create a conducive <laughs> environment where NOOP thrives, FDC thrives, the NRM thrives, DP, UPC, the whole uh, political the system here in Uganda? Most important is one word, let's mm. change, change on mindset. Mm. A transformation of our mindset. All right. Because we shouldn't come in probably as a noob, mm. and then you come all of a sudden pronouncing war. Mm. War is ahead of you, it is your number plate, you're pronouncing war. You're coming into a competition. Mm. Because that is you now provoking the other side also to prepare themselves and respond accordingly. Uh, Alex, but unfortunately, what I want to put forward yes, also, mm. these soldiers, some of these soldiers I believe you see, are self styled. Mm. They do not come in on command. But uh, unfortunately, when the atrocities happen, we don't see repercussion. Maybe they're not investigated, maybe right. they're not Thank captured, you very but uh, much. the problem He's is... He's talking about yes. self-styled soldiers yes. in that regard. Alex Weiss, resolutions on how to alleviate this situation before I let you go. Um, <coughs> we are going to continue mm -hmm. because People Power created a political platform and political wing mm. of liberating this country. Is this case in the court of uh, public opinion or are you going to No, of, of course law? this is a matter in, court, in public opinion. This mm, case has already been taken to the court of public opinion. Or the courts of law? Because as you understand, even the courts of law, it is mm. a criminal syndicate that is headed by Genome 7. This very case went through Justice Mulangida and he did, it, he did not give it justice. So we also we are also aware of the fact mm. that now we have more cadre judges and a system that has broken down. But you know, when you break down institutions, you're just brewing anarchy. And you can imagine we also don't believe that we shall get justice from the courts of law. And it is a fact because we don't want to come and to come to such uh, platforms oh and right. cast <laughs> where it is not. But however, mm. the resolution and solution is by Ugandans. Ugandans should wake up and stop taking democracy for granted. Once you feel that democracy is being abrogated, All right. it is your duty as a citizen to fight, fight hard, and fight real. Alex Waiswa Mufumbiro, the deputy spokesperson for the mm. National Unity Platform Party. We also did have Mr. Ganshanga Biraro Ephraim. Thank you very much for having made the time to speak with us, especially regards to the people of Buhuayju West who have been watching. Thank, uh, thank you very much. And indeed to you too, you Alex Waiswa, kind regards to the National Unity Platform I Party. I have shared the video Indeed. with him. You're still watching mm. Morning at NTV. Great